In Job 25, we see Bildad's final speech. He is restating and pointing out the already agreed upon notion that God is righteous and sovereign. Bildad points out that man cannot be pure. Not even newborn babies are innocent. He seems to imply that Job is suffering because he is not righteous. In fact, no man is. And he may sort of even be explaining Job's suffering to him philosophically. He may be implying that Job is being punished by God. But Job's response in chapter 26 is a sarcastic tone. He mocks Bildad for his unoriginal wisdom and seemingly for not adding any new insight to the discussion. Job begins a long speech laying out his evidence in his mind for just how powerful and sovereign God really is. In his speech, beginning in chapter 26, Job is making a case to defend God's sovereignty and his righteousness even after all of his suffering. And we cannot miss the overarching theme and central message laid out in the whole book of Job. Job's struggle and undeserved suffering often gives fodder to the question, if God is just and righteous, why do innocent people suffer? There's an extremely important concept to be aware of in this story. Satan knows he cannot contend with the sovereignty of God. He knows he cannot destroy God's people because God's people have free will. Now, Satan's tactic is to deceive in an attempt to alienate God's people and to convince them to turn on God. Simply put, Satan is suggesting that God's people only love him because it benefits them and that they would turn from him and curse God if they were allowed to suffer. So why does God entertain Satan's notion? Why does God allow Satan to harm and manipulate Job? God allows Satan to tempt Job because he knows Job's heart. God is not accepting Satan's challenge here. He's proving him wrong. Job will not turn on God even after losing everything that he has. Job's speeches render his friends silent. They have nothing more to add at this point. God renders Satan silent by proving him wrong. Job's friends, his wife, even his detractors by this point are all silent. Satan is silent, but God is not silent in the end. See, God cannot just be the God of the mountain when times are good. He also has to be the God of the valley in times of trial. And I know there's some listening to this and reading Job's story who are going through a season of undeserved suffering or pain or loss. Maybe you don't have any answers, but you need to know that you're not suffering alone. God hears our cries and he is with us. As Job says in chapter 26, he is the God who hung the earth over nothing. God sees everything. All creation is naked before God's eyes. Far be it from us to put conditions on our worship of the Lord of the universe. He is Yahweh. He is the Ruach, the breath of life. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God is our provider, our savior from death. God deserves our devotion and ultimate worship even when we suffer undeservedly.